Hare Krishna, welcome to everybody. We will continue. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, welcome. I'll just quickly uh, summarize what we did last class. So last class we did the 13th chapter entitled Indra afflicted by sinful reaction. And then uh, we heard how after killing of Ritasura, uh, how everybody was happy except of Indra. And uh, then we heard the history why Indra was unhappy, how actually he was very much afraid of killing a Brahmana because in the past he already killed Vishwarup and had trouble due to that. Brahmahatya, but now he was again asked by demigods to kill Vritasura and they encouraged him and told him, Brahmanas told him, don't worry, we shall perform Ashmeda sacrifice and you will be relieved from a sinful reaction. So on, on this assurance, uh, Indra accepted to fight and eventually kill Vritasura, but now what happened? That didn't protect him from uh, from uh, the sinful reaction, and he was chased by a personified sinful reaction who manifested as as uh, old woman afflicted by tuberculosis uh, with a very bad odor and uh, blood oozing from her body. So Indra was fleeing, trying to escape, and she she would follow him wherever he would go. Eventually, he went to the northeast to Manasarovar Lake, which is a holy place, and he hid there in the under the water in the lotus stems. But uh, because Agni also could not come there to deliver him his uh, oblations, Indra was starving. And during that time, Nahusha he ruled the uh, Swarga. But uh, he made some mistakes, made uh, inappropriate proposals to Indra's wife. And uh, eventually he was cursed to, to fall from Swarga. And uh, Indra was, uh, during the time, residing Manasarovara. And his sins gradually diminished. First by the influence of, of Rudra, or Lord Shiva, who, who was presiding deity of uh, of that region, also due to blessings of Lakshmi, his sins diminished, and uh, finally due to meditation and worship on, on, on Lord Vishnu that he was doing under the water. So when his uh, sins diminished, he was able to return to his position, and there, Brahmanas, they performed the uh, Ashamedha sacrifice, and the uh, sinful reaction was eventually completely removed. So now we'll go to continue. I'll just quickly share my screen. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Naranam Namaskritim Naram Cheva Narotam Devi Sarasvati Miyasim Tato Jayam Udhirayat Nashta Prashubadishu. Nityam Bhagavata Seva, Bhagavati Uttama Shloki, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki, Om Gyanati Mirandasya Gyanam Jana Shlaka, Chakshu Umritam Yena Tasmi Shri Gurvena Maha. So in this 14th chapter that we started, uh, uh, we hear about the history of uh, Bhritasura's previous life. Because at the beginning of this chapter, Maharaj Parikshit, he is a little perplexed how such demon could become such a great Vaishnava, such a great devotee. So he is asking Shukadeva Goswami this question. What was the reason that uh, uh, Rathasara was such a uh, great Vaishnava, Mahabhagavat? And then in the last loka, we did the last class, Shukadeva Goswami, he starts uh, speaking about the King Chitraketu, who was uh, king of uh, Shurasen province. 
and uh, was ruling the entire earth. And uh, it's described that during his reign, the earth produced everything necessary. So it means that he was very, very pious and dharmic king. So now we are continuing with the Shloka 11. Tasya Bharya Sahasranam Sahasrani Dashabhavan Santha Nikash Chapi Nripo Nalebe Thasu Santatim this Chitraketu had 10 million wives, but although he was capable of producing children, he did not receive a child from any of them. By chance, all the wives were barren. Srila Prabhupada doesn't comment on this uh, pretty astonishing information, 10 million wives. Okay, we heard of people with, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, ten wives. Maybe in, uh, in Islam you have these harems where some uh, kings have, you know, 50 or 60 or 100. Of course, Lord Krishna, he had uh, how many? 10,000? Uh, what was it? Krishna's wish? 16,108 uh, queens. But Chitrak had to surpass them all with 10 million wives. And Sri Vishnu Chaitakur, he comments here, he had 10 million wives, 10,000 times 1,000. He married them in order to have offspring, Santanika, not just for enjoyment. So I would assume that he didn't marry them all at once. So he married one by one, in hope to have a child. And then we, he, we, when he didn't have a child with the first, second, third, thousand, ten thousand, million, he, he keep marrying the next one, next one in hope he'll get a child. But somehow it was not happening because his karma was not to have a child. So this is when somebody is just by his karma doesn't have a doesn't have uh, destiny for something to happen in his life, and uh, by force he's trying, but still, you know, the 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 the, the destiny is, is stronger. You cannot change it so easily. Okay, next, Rupa Udharya Vayojanma Vidya Aishwarya Shriyadibhi. Sampanasya Gunai Sarvaish Chinta Bhandya Patir Abud. Chitraketu, the husband of these millions of wives, was endowed with a beautiful form, magnanimity, and youth. He was born in a high family. He had a complete education and he was wealthy and opulent. Nevertheless, in spite of being endowed with all these assets, he was full of anxiety because he did not have a son. Purple. It appears that the king first married one wife, but she could not bear a child. Then he married a second, a third, a fourth, and so on. But none of, of the wives could bear children in spite of the material assets of Janmaishwarya Shutta Shri, birthed in an aristocratic family with, with full opulence, wealth, education, and beauty, he was very much aggrieved because in spite of having so many wives, he had no son. Certainly his grief was natural. Grihasa life does not mean having a wife and no children. Sanake Pandit says, Putra Hinam Grihasunyam. If a family man has no son, his home is no better than a desert. The king was certainly most unhappy that he could not get a son, and this is why he had married so many times. Kshatriyas especially allowed to marry no more than one wife, allowed to marry more than one wife, and this king did so. Nonetheless, he had no issue. 
So Slavish Shari Tab recommends that all the vice were barren by fate. Meaning by his karma, by his destiny. Uh, he was destined to have no children. So that's why all the wives he he married, uh, they were barren. So it, it, it didn't help that he married so many. Uh, by the probability, you would expect, okay, if the first one is barren, second one will not be, or if the first ten are barren, then the next one will not be. But no, all ten million, they were barren, which is quite astonishing. Also here, yeah, the importance of the son is stressed. Uh, not so much of the daughters. It's not mentioned whether he had any daughter, but it's it's not counting. Why? Not because the daughters are not lovable, that female children are not uh, lovable, but in uh, in Varnashrama Dharma, in, uh, in the Vedic civilization, the son was one who, who would perform uh, oblations to the Pitris, to the to the forefathers, not the daughter. So the the son was one who was uh, delivering his forefathers from undesirable conditions like hellish existence and so on. So he would do the sacrif the sacrifice, the yagyas. So that's why everybody very much wanted to to have a son who will do shraddha for him. And in this way, uh, be promoted, uh, helping to be promoted to to Pitriloka. Thirteen, Natasya Sampadas Harva, Mahishyo Vama Lochana, Sarabhaumasya Bhush Cheyam, Abhavam Pariti Hetava. His queens all had beautiful faces and attractive eyes. Yet neither his opulences, his hundreds and thousands of queens, nor the lands of which he was the supreme proprietor, were sources of happiness for him. So you can have everything, but if you don't have the thing you you want the most, uh, then then you are unhappy. Of course, in materialistic civilization, we have many, many rich, rich men who have everything and they are still unhappy because all these material opulences cannot satisfy the soul. So because Chitraketu had such a strong material desire to have a son, he couldn't be happy with, with anything else. Tasyai khada tu bhavanam angira bhagavan rishihi lokan anucharan etan upagachat yadrichaya. Once upon a time, when a powerful sage named Angira was traveling all over the universe without engagement, by his sweet will he came to the palace of King Chitraketu. Tam pujai tva vidivat. Pratyutthanan narhanadibi kritatityam upasidat sukhasinam samahita. Chitraketu immediately stood up from his throne and offered him worship. He offered drinking water and eatables, and in this way performed his duty as a host to great guest. When the Rishi was seated very comfortably, the king, restraining his mind and senses, sat on the ground at the side of the Rishi's feet. So this is standard culture in the old days uh, when the saintly person, Sadhu or Rishi, would come. Uh, even the king, he would uh, get up from his throne and worship him and wash his feet. So even Lord Krishna would do the same when Narada Muni visited his palaces in Dwaraka. Krishna would worship him. He worshipped also the poor Sudama Brahmana who came to visit him. 
So th- this this is showing us that the culture when the guest comes, especially such a highly spiritual advanced guest, how he should be treated. Maharishi Stam Upasinam Prashraya Vanatham Kshitau Prati Puja Maharaja Sama Bashyedam Abravit O King Parikshit, when Chitra Ketu bent low in humility, was seated at the lotus feet of the great sage. The sage congratulated him for his humility and hospi- hospitality. The sage addressed him in the following words. Angiravacha, apite namayam svasti, prakritinam tatha atmana, yata prakritibir gupta, puman raja chasaptabi. The great sage Angira said, my dear king, I hope that your body and mind and your royal associates and paraphernalia are well. Then the seven properties of material nature, the total material energy, the ego, and the five objects of sense gratification are in proper order. The living entity within the material elements is happy. Without these seven elements, man cannot exist. Similarly, a king is always protected by seven elements. His instructor, Swam, your guru, his ministers, his kingdom, his fort, his treasury, his royal order, and his friends. As it is quoted by Sridhar Swami in his Bhagavatam commentary, Swam Yamatyau Janapada Durga Dravina Sanchaya Dando Mitram Chatasya Itha Sapta Prakritayo Mataha a king is not alone. He first has his spiritual master, the supreme guide. Then come his ministers, his kingdom, his fortifications, his treasury, his system of law and order, and his friends and allies. If these seven are properly maintained, the king is happy. Similarly, as explained in Bhagavad Gita, Dehinusminyata Dehe, the living end of the soul is within the material covering of the Mahatattva. Ego and Pancha Tanmatra, the five objects of sense gratification. When these seven are in proper order, the living entity is in mood of pleasure. Generally, when the associates of the king are quiet and obedient, the king can be happy. Therefore, the great sage Angira Rishi inquired about the king's personal health and the good fortune of his seven associates. When we inquire from a friend whether everything is well, we are concerned not only with his personal self, but also with his family, his source of income, and his assistants or servants. All of them must be well, and then a person can be happy. Do you have good health, good fortune, and ministers? The happiness of the king depends on the happiness of ministers and the happiness of ministers depends on the happiness of the king. An example is given. Just as the jiva is protected by the seven elements beginning with the Mahatattva, since he cannot exist for an instance without these elements, a king is protected by seven elements, guru, ministers, friends, treasury, population, fort, and strength. So in other words, in when you live in a society, you're not isolated island. Uh, so your, your well-being will uh, depend on the well-being of others in that society. If around you is, is, is uh, you know, destruction, chaos, war, how can you be happy in such situation? So everybody in your family, in, uh, in your surrounding also has to be well in order for you to, to feel well and be happy. Otherwise, if, if bombs are falling in the neighborhood, uh, how can I be happy sitting at my home? So that's why the leadership of the society, if, if the leadership is in proper order, 
then everybody in the that particular country or state uh, will be will be well. If, if the leadership is in chaos, as it's nowadays in the whole world, how can citizens be be happy? It is difficult. Atmanam prakritish vada nidaya shreya apnuyat pragya tatha prakritthayo nara deva hitadaya O king, O lord of humanity, when a king directly depends upon his associates and followers, the instructions, he is happy. Similarly, when his associates offer their gifts and activities to the king, and follow his orders, they are also happy. The actual happiness of a king and his dependents is described in this verse. King should not simply give orders to his dependents because he is supreme. Sometimes he must follow their instructions. Similar dependents should depend on the king this mutual dependence will make everyone happy. So in other words, it's a cooperative effort to rule the state, to rule the kingdom. It's not just one person. It requires many. Somebody's position as a king, others' a position as ministers. And if they help each other and serve each other, then uh, whole governance will be proper nowadays in the in these democratic societies we have many parties who are fighting against each other and sometimes i've seen that uh, in the parliaments the deputies there the uh, the congressmen they, they they start physically to fight each other it is, you know in quite a few countries i think in thailand in taiwan here and there there, there were these fights physical fist fights in the parliaments. And these are people who are supposed to rule the country together and they are fighting like dogs and cats. When the king gives all his duties to his ministers, the kingdom is happy. A king minister who offers health, wealth, horses and elephants, cause of anxiety and greed to the king are protected by the king. Another version is Ahatthadaya, ministers whose anxieties are destroyed by the king become happy. So whether they, they give their anxieties to king or whose anxieties are destroyed by king, they become happy. Apidhara praja matya britya shrenyo tamantrina paura jana pada bhupa atmaja vashavartina. O king, are your wives, citizens, secretaries, and servants, and the merchants who sell spices and oil under your control? Are you also in full control of ministers, the inhabitants of your palace, your provincial governors, your sons, and your other dependents? Purport, the master king and his subordinates should be interdependent. Through cooperation, both of them can be happy. Moreover, if all the people obey the king, there is a happiness. Shenya refers to sellers of oil and betelnut. Yasyat manu vashas chetsyat sarvetat vashaga ime loka saphala yachanti sarve bali matandritaha if the king's mind is fully controlled, all his family members and governmental officers 
as subordinate to him. His provincial governors present taxes on time without resistance and what to speak of lesser servants. Angira Rishi asked the king whether his mind was also under control. This is most essential for happiness. He asked whether the king's mind is under his control. Anu Vashakam means dependent. So you, there is a saying, you, if, if you don't have, you can have a whole world under your control, but if, if you have uncontrolled mind, you cannot be happy. And you can be completely penniless, but if you have mind under control, you'll be happy. Atmana priyate natma paratas vata evava lakshe labda kamantvan pintaya shabala mukham. O King Chitaketu, I can observe that your mind is not pleased. You seem not to have achieved your desired goal. It is because of you yourself, or it has been caused by others. Your pale face reflects your deep anxiety. So again, he speaks to the silent king, the mind in your body is not heavy because of yourself or someone else. I'm happy. No, I see that your face is pale. So sometimes when we meet somebody and he asks us, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. Thank you. This is the usual automatic answer. But uh, sometimes you're not fine. And that can be detected uh, from uh, from the face. It said that the uh, face is the index of the mind. So if somebody is in deep anxiety, you can observe that uh, on a face, on a, on a facial expression, expression. There is a science called physiognomy that you actually can... Uh, determine even the character of the person by looking at his face, the facial facial features. I met one once a homeopathic doctor who diagnosed me just by looking at my face. He looked a little bit here and there. And then he said, oh, we have this problem, that problem. Uh, and he prescribed me medicine just on the basis of this uh, this diagnosis by looking at my face because he was an expert in this physiognomy. So similarly, you can uh, detect not only the physical disease, but also the mental anxiety by observing the person's face. Even the Kalpito Rajan, Vidusha Munina Pisa, Prashaya Vanato Buyaha, Vajra Kamas Tato Munim. Shurya Swami said, O King Parikshit, although the great sage Angira was, knew everything, he inquired from the king in this way. Thus King Chitraketu, desiring a son, bent low in great humility and spoke to the great sage as follows. Since the face is the index of, to the mind, a saintly person can study the condition of one's mind by seeing his face. An Angira Rishi remarked about the king's discolored face. King Chitra cared to explain the cause of his anxiety as follows. So though the sage knew the cause, he wanted to hear the king's grief from his own mouth. There is a connection between the body and the mind. So the states of the mind will reflect on the body. So positive states of mind uh, will positively affect the body. And if somebody is going through some sort of depression or other negative states of the mind, that will also be shown in the body, especially if, if this lasts for a long time, it can cause, uh, you know, some disease. That's why you have psychosomatic disorders that are caused by, by the mind. You know, if the mind is always in a 
in the wrong state, it will reflect on the body and it will cause some problems in the body. But then people, instead of curing, you know, these negative states of mind, they they try to cure the symptoms, but it just doesn't work. First, you need to correct uh, the original cause, and that that's the the negative state of the mind. Chitra Ketru Vacha Bhagavan Kim Naviditam Tapogyana Samadhi Bihi Yoginam Vastapapanam Bahiranta Sharirishu King Chitra Ketru said, O great Lord Angira, because of austerity, knowledge, and transal Samadhi, you are free from all the reactions of sinful life. Therefore, as a perfect yogi, you can understand everything external and internal regarding embodied conditioned souls like us. Tatapi prichato bruyam brahman atmani chintitam bhavato vidushash chapi chodita stvat anugya O oh, great soul, you are aware of everything, yet you are asking me why I am full of anxiety. Therefore, in response to your order, let me disclose the cause. I will obey the order of you who are asking. I will explain the worry in my mind. So Chitra Ketu, he has a full faith that uh, Angira Muni already knows everything, but since he is asking, okay, I'm going to tell him to describe to him. Loka Pala Api Pratya Samraja Ishvarya Sampada Nananda Yantya Prajamam Kshutrit Kamam Ivapare. As a person agreed by hunger and thirst is not pleased by the external gratification of flower garlands or sandal pulp. I'm not pleased with my empire, opulences, or possessions, which are desirable even for great demigods, because I have no son. So other things like garlands or sandal do not please a person who desires food or water because of hunger and thirst. Another example is if you have a fish outside of the water, uh, you can give it many things, but uh, fish cannot be happy on, on a dry dry land. It has to go back to water. Tata pahi mahabhaga purvai sahagatam tamaha yatta tarima dushparam Therefore, great sage, please save me and my forefathers who are descending to the darkness of hell because I have no progeny. Can you do something so that I may have a son to deliver us from hellish conditions? According to Vedic civilization, one gets married simply to have a son who is needed to offer oblations to his forefathers. King Chitraketu responsibly desired to beget a child so that he and his forefathers might be delivered from the darkest regions. He was concerned with the how to get Pinda oblations in the next life, not only for himself, but also for his forefathers. Therefore, he requested Angira Rishi to favor him by doing something that could help him get a son. I have attained hell along with my ancestors. Do something so that I can surpass hell by having a son. In other words, he's afraid of uh, falling into hellish conditions together with his ancestors. And he needs a son to offer Pinda and elevate all of them. This is Karma Kanda process of elevation. Of course, if one is a devotee, 
he doesn't need to offer pinda to forefathers. Just by his devotional service, all of his ancestors will be delivered, including himself also. So if one is devotee, he doesn't really require a son in order to be liberated. Just by the power of bhakti, he will be promoted. Yes, Manaji, please. Yeah, uh, then why... Uh... Why did Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, go to the Gaya and uh, do this binder for his father? Yes, this is a good question. Well, the Lord followed the customs of uh, those day society. And the custom was that the son would do the Shraddha for his father. And... Uh, Lord went there, but this was not the main reason, you know, the, the Lord went there. Uh, if you remember when uh, when he went there to God, uh, all the priests in God were quite, quite, quite greedy, you know. Even nowadays, if you go there, they all just want donations, donations. And, uh, but he, Lord Jitana, he gave them enough, enough donations to satisfy them. But he was not really worried that... Uh, Jagannath Mishra, his father, will go to hell or, because he's a supreme personality of Godhead. So how can his father, you know, go to hell or anywhere else than back to spiritual world? He just followed the customs. And then also he he went there to meet Ishwarapuri, which was a more, more important reason. Uh, because if you remember, when he came back from Gaia, he he was transformed. Before that, before going to Gaya, he was a Nimai Pandit, scholar Pandit, who would uh, lecture on uh, Nyaya, on logic, and Sanskrit grammar. So everybody in Avid knew him uh, as a, just a Pandit scholar, but not really a devotee. But when he be returned back to Gaya, all of a sudden, after receiving the the initiation from Ishwarapuri, he became transformed. He became a devotee, ecstatic devotee. And everybody was perplexed. So his main reason going to Gaya on the ex on the pretext of uh, offering Shraddha was uh, actually to to, to tr not transform himself. He is, he, 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 he's, a, he's a Krishna himself. He's a devotee. But to to <clears throat> To go into the next phase of his uh, of his pastimes in, in the devotee phase, so to so Gaya was a break. He was a was a point where his scholarly pastimes stopped and where his uh, pastimes as devotee, great devotee, started. Another thing regarding this Shraddha, there is a shadow process that is done according to the smarter rules, which is quite elaborate shadow process where you, you know, offer oblations to different demigods and to Lord Vishnu and it's, uh, you do yagya. So many things that there are quite complicated process. Shri Bhaktisanta Sarasthi Thakur, he very much simplified uh, this process. So he introduced something called Vaishnava Shraddha, which basically consists of uh, of Kirtan. So Kirtan as instead of the Yagya and uh, distributing Prasadam to the devotees. So he advised all his uh, all his disciples to follow this Vaishnava Shraddha process. And of course, you can offer uh, the remnants of that prasad and it's offered to the Lord. You, you can offer to the diseased person, your relative. Uh, so it's a very much simplified process. But some of the disciples who were still very much attached to, to their Varnashrama, Smarta, previous background, uh, they, they would do the, the Smarta Shraddha process. Especially one leader it was Kunja, Kunja Babu, Kunja Bihari, who was the main manager of Sri Chaitanya Math. He 
Although advised by Saraswati Thakur to follow the Vaishnava Shraddha process, not to do the smarter Shraddha, still he did a smarter Shraddha process. And this way, Saraswati Thakur was very much displeased and dissatisfied. Because he showed that still, still he has so much faith in Karma Kanda processes, not so much faith in the power of Bhakti. Because if you are if you are completely convinced that the Bhakti is enough to purify not only you, but all previous generations, all your ancestors, you know, three generations, ten generations, hundred generations back, depending whether you are Kanishta Madhyama or Uttama Adhikari. That the, just your devotional service has power to purify all, and you, all your ancestors. What is the need to do Karma Kanda Sharada? But one has to have faith in Bhakti, not uh, faith in, uh, in the Karma Kanda procedures. Is it okay, Mataji? Yeah. Um, I also have a very practical question. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, because uh, up till now and um, every year in, in China, uh, our family custom is that we will offer uh, something to to the ancestors, mm. uh, especially it is now the spring uh, season. Yeah, uh, it's something like this shala uh, offered to our uh uh for a grandfather grandmother so so how can we do as a devotee because we cannot go with our family members and they eat meat and so i don't know oh you mean in in china they meet and they do some sort of chinese tradition for their ancestors yeah yeah so as a devotee, you can just, you know, invite a few devotee friends, have a kirtan with them, uh, offer some prasadam to the deities, serve that prasadam to, to the assembled devotees, and then offer a small portion of that prasadam to, to your ancestors, uh, to your relatives, deceased relatives. So in this way, they'll be the most... Uh, you know, benefited. You don't need to go either through Karma Kanda Smarta procedure or Chinese Smarta procedure, whatever the Chinese procedure is. You do the Vaishnava Shraddha and it's a simple. It just consists of, uh, you know, three things uh, of Kirtan, Holy Name, serving the devotees and Prasadam. So th this is enough to benefit and you do it with the meditation. I want to benefit uh, my relative, my ancestor, whoever I want to to benefit. So this is this is good enough. Uh, we should have faith that this will be more beneficial for them than uh, any any elaborate Varnashrama Dharma or Chinese procedure. That this simple Harinam Sankirtan and Prasadam will be more beneficial for them than any ritual. Whether it's coming from a smarta uh, background or Chinese background, is that okay, Madhuji? Okay, so, thank you. You just invite some devotees, have kirtan with them, serve them prasadam, and offer a little bit in front of the picture of your ancestor or deceased relative. Okay, let us continue. Shishuka Vacha. It yartitha sabagavan kripalur brahmanasuta shapa itva charun tvashtram tvashtaram ayajad vibhu. And of course, uh, I just wanted, I forgot to mention when uh, you invite these devotees uh, and serve them prasadam, you can say, Oh, I'm this devotee, in this prasanna, in the name of my relative, please bless him that he can be become a devotee in his next life. Something like that. So by blessings of devotees of the Vaishnavas, that person will be promoted. 
Okay, continuing. In response to the request of Maharaj Chitra Ketu, Angira Rishi, who was born of Lord Brahma's mind, was very merciful toward him. Because the sage was a greatly powerful personality, he performed a sacrifice by offering oblations of sweet rice to Tvashta. So Tvashta is uh, one demigod. Dyeshta Shreshta Chaya Ragyo Mahishi Nam Chabarata Namna Krita Dutis Tase Yagyo Chistam Adad Vija. O Parish Maraj, Parish Maraj, best of the Bharatas, the remnants of the food offered in the Yagya are given by the great sage Angira to the first and most perfect among Chitraketu's millions of queens, whose name was Krita Duty. So he gave the cooked rice to the queen. He had first married and he was best in charm. So it means she was the most beautiful of all of them. And she was the first one. So the other queens, he didn't marry because they were more beautiful, but because he couldn't have a child with the first one. Ataha Nripatim Rajan Bhavi Thaikas Tavatmaja Harsha Shoka Pardas Tubyam Iti Brahma Suto Yayo Therefore the great sage told the king, O great king, now you will have a son who will be the cause of both jubilation and lamentation. The sage then left without waiting for Chitra Ketu's response. So Harsha Shoka, both jubilation and lamentation. The word Harsha means jubilation and Shoka means lamentation. The king was overwhelmed with the joy when he understood that he would have a son. Because of his great jubilation, he could not actually understand the statement of the sage Angira. He accepted it to mean that there would certainly be jubilation because of the birth of his future son, but that he would be the king's only son and being very proud of his great wealth and empire, would not be very obedient to his father. Thus the king was satisfied, thinking, let there be a son. It does not matter if he is not very obedient. In Bengal, there is a proverb that instead of having no maternal uncle, it is better to have a maternal uncle who is blind. Mama. Mama is the maternal uncle in Bengali. The king accepted this philosophy thinking that disobedient son would be better than no son at all. The great sage Chanakya Pandi says, Korta putrena jatena yona vidvan na dharmika khanena chakshusha kimva chakshu pithaiva kevalam. What is the use of a son who is a neither learned scholar nor a devotee? Such a son is like a blind, diseased eye which always causes causes suffering. Nevertheless, the material world is so polluted that one wants to have a son even though he is useless. This attitude was represented in the history of King Chitraketu. Sometimes also the useless son is uh, compared to, to urine, putra and mutra. Putra is the sun, Mutra is the urine. So the sun who is neither a devotee nor, nor a learned scholar or great hero, he, he is no better than, than Mutra, than urine. But for us as devotees, if we want to have a son at all, we should desire a devotee son. Otherwise, the whole purpose of having a son is completely missed. If you cannot raise your son to be a devotee, it's it's a it's a great loss. 
but of course you, you, we don't have a control of this it's again the the choice of that soul but it's our duty as parents to to give them all the opportunity to become devotees the sage thought why should i tell him now how his son will be cause of joy and sorrow the king will know this at the birth and death of the child. But it is necessary to say unwelcome words now, when in the future the king approaches me. Without telling the truth clearly, he left. The king thought, because my son will have many good qualities, he will give joy, because I will not be able to control him. Since he will have more power than me, he will bring grief. Let it be, I will tolerate that grief. Thus the king became happy. So Angina Muni, he couldn't directly tell him what will happen, but he just indicated, just hinted. And king, he interpreted in a, whatever way he wanted to interpret. Sapitat prashanat eva chitra ketor dharayat Garban Krita Dutir Devi Krita Kagnir Ivat Majamu. As Kritika Devi, after receiving the semen of Lord Shiva from Agni, conceived a child named Skanda or Kartikeya. Krita Duty, having received semen from Chitra Ketu, became pregnant after eating remnants of food from the yagya performed by Angira. So there is this procedure uh, when you have food, the remnants of, of prasadam from Yagya, the queen eats it and then she can uh, get pregnant. Also in uh, Lord Ramachandra's Leela, we have a we have example the queens of Maharaj Darish, uh, Dasharat uh, they all took a different uh, portion of the of the I don't remember was it sweet rice or something else and they all conceived uh, Lord Ramachandra Lakshmana Shatrugna and Bharat Tasya Anudinam Garba Shukla Paksha Iv Ivodupa Vabride Shura Sinesha Tejasa Shanakarnipa. After receiving semen from Arachitrake to the king of Shura Sin, King Queen Krita Duty gradually developed in her pregnancy. O King Parikshit, just as the moon develops during the bright fortnight. Atakale upavrite kumara samajayata janayam shurasena nam shimatam paramamudam. Thereafter, in due course of time, a son was born to the king. Hearing news of this, all the inhabitants of the state of Shurasin were extremely pleased. So all the residents of, of that state, they also shared the grief, previously shared the grief of the king for not having a son. And now when he got a son, they were also very joyful. So they all empathized with the king. That means that they loved the, their king. Nowadays, people know that they don't empathize with their presidents, but <laughs> they would rather have them removed. Krishna Raja Kumarasya Snada Shochir Alankrita Vacha Itva Shisho Viprai Karyam Asa Jatakam King Chitraketu was especially pleased. After purifying himself by beating and by decorating himself with ornaments, he engaged learned Brahmanas in offering benedictions to the child and performing the birth ceremony. He was more than jubilant. He was 
you know, completely lost in that happiness, material happiness of having his long cherished desire finally fulfilled. Tebyo Hiranyan Rajatam Vasam Syabaranicha Graman Hayan Gajan Pradad Denunam Arbudhani Shat. Unto the Brahmanas who took part in the ritualistic ceremony, the king gave charity of gold, silver, garments, ornaments, villages, horses, and elephants, as well as 60 crores of cows. 600 million cows. Huge charity. Varsha Kaman Anyesham Parjanya Ivadehinam Danyam Yashasyam Ayushyam Kumarasya Mahamana. As a cloud indiscriminately pours water on earth, the beneficent King Chitraketu to increase the reputation, opulence, and longevity of his son distributed like a rainfall all desirable things to everyone. Yeah, for the benefit when the son is born or a child is born, you want to give charity, especially to feed uh, prasadam to brahmanas, that they can they could give blessings to your child, that he will have a long life and uh, everything else. The king gave most valuable things rather than worthless things to other persons since he was generous. Yeah, he didn't give trink trinklets, trinkets, uh, the useless, useless things. So this is a, again when uh, one is giving a charity, he should give something that is worth. Otherwise, just pretending to give a charity and giving a, you know, the medallion which is, <laughs> which is uh, made for some cheap metal, but it's painted like a gold. That that's useless. It's a just sort of show. Show of a charity. Krishna labde tarajarshes tanaye nudinam pitu yata nishvas nishvasya krichrapte danis nehon va vardata. When a poor man gets some money after great difficulty, his affection for the money increases daily. Similarly, when King Chitraket, after great difficulty, received the son, his affection for the son increased day after day. So his mind is, is swinging from, from great anxiety now to great jubilation. So he doesn't have, a, at this point, equiposed mind. It's swinging from one uh, negative state to another positive state, and again, it will swing back to, to great grief because this is the nature of material happiness and distress. They come and go as the summer and winter season. If one is, is if, if, the, if somebody is overwhelmingly happy at one moment, you can be sure that very soon he'll be overwhelmingly sad. So that's why for those who want to be transcendentalists, to practice spiritual life, that's why they advise to be equiposed, sama darshina, to have you know, equiposed vision and to have a balanced mind, not to accept uh, material happiness. And in this way, when the distress on its own accord comes, they will also not be very much dis disturbed. Matus tvati taram putre Sneho moha samud bavaha krita dyute sapatni nam praja kama jvaro bhavat. The mother's attraction and attention to the son, like that of the child's father, excessively increased. The other wives, seeing krita dyute's son, were very much agitated 
as if by high fevers with the desire to have sons. In the otherwise develop a painful desire for a son. So in other words, they became very much envious. Why this wife has a son and we don't have? It's envy. Chitra Ketur Ati Prithir Yatadhare Prajavati Nat Tatan Yeshu San Sanjage Balam Layato Maham. As King Chitraketu fostered his son very carefully, his affection for Queen Krita Duty increased, but gradually he lost affection for otherwise who had no sons. So this was his mistake. He's supposed to treat all the wives equally. But now, because a first queen gave him a child, uh, he developed much more affection for her and lost all affection for others. And obviously, they, the others were in grief. They were very much affected by it. So he caused his own unhappiness by unequal treatment of his wives. Ta parya tapyam atmanam garha yantyo vyasuyaya anapatyena dukhina ragyars chana darena cha. The other queens were extremely unhappy that they are being sunless. Because of the king's negligence towards them, they condemned themselves in envy and lamented. If somehow Chitraketu could uh, maintain uh, affection for other wives as well and treat them properly, uh, they would not feel neglected and they would not kill the child, as we will see just a little later. A wife who has no sons is neglected at home by her husband and dishonored by her co-wives exactly like a maid servant. Certainly such a woman is condemned in every respect because of her sinful life. As stated by Chanakya Pandit, Mata Yasya Grihe Nasti Bhara Chapriya Vadini Aranyam Tena Gantavyam Yata Aranyam Tathagriham A person who has no mother at home and whose wife does not speak sweetly should go to the forest. For such a person living at home and living in the forest are equal. Similarly, for a woman who has no son, who is not cared for by her husband, and whose co-wives neglect her, treating her like a maidservant, to go to the forest is better than to remain at home. The sunless wife is seen by the husband as worthy of sending to live in the forest. Yeah, if she doesn't feel properly treated and loved at home, then for her it's better to, to leave that home. Dasinam konu santapa swamina paricharyaya Abhikshnam labda mananam dasya dasiva durvaga. Even maidservants who are constantly engaged in rendering service to the husband are honored by the husband, and thus they have nothing for which to lament. Our position, however, is that we are maidservants of the maidservant. Therefore, we are most unfortunate. So now they felt that they're just made servant of Krita duty of the first queen. And of course, probably she didn't uh, also have much sense that, uh, that, uh, that her co-wives uh, are suffering mental anguish. If, if she knew, she could uh, have told to her husband to treat them properly also, but she was not that sensitive because she was completely occupied with the 
care for her child and love for her child. Evam sandahya mananam sapatnya putra sampada ragyos samata varitinam vidvesho balavana bhut. Sri Shukadeva Goswami continued being neglected by their husband and seeing Krita Duty's opulence. In possessing a son, Krita Duty's co wives always burned in envy, which became extremely strong. The co wives had the quality of being disrespected by the king. Asamata Vritinam. So they were not. They were not properly treated by the king. Just by neglecting them, he was offending them and disrespecting them. So offense could be done not only by doing something actively, but also by, by not doing something that you are supposed to do. For example, if, if the guest comes to your house and uh, you ignore him and you just look at the other way and don't uh, come, uh, you don't come to greet him, you're basically offending him by not doing what you're supposed to do. So similarly, these wives were offended by the king neglecting them. Vidveshva Nashta Mataya Striyo Dharuna Chetasa Garan Dadu Kumaraya Durmarsha Nripatim Prati As their envy increased, they lost their intelligence. Being extremely hard-hearted and unable to tolerate the king's neglect, they finally administered poison to the sun. So that means that they could not tolerate uh, anymore king's uh, neglect of them. They, they, they burned so much out of envy that they had to do something. So they did the worst possible thing. Krita Jyotir Ajananti Sapat Ninam Agam Mahat Supta Eviti Sanchitya Nirikshya Vyacharad Grihe. Unaware of the poison administered by her co wives, Queen Krita Jyoti walked within the house, thinking that her son was sleeping deeply. She did not understand that he was dead. So the baby died in a in a in a in a dream, just by gi being given a poison. Shanam Sucharam Balam Upadharya Manishini Putram Anaya Me Badri Iti Dhatrim Achodayat. Thinking that her child had been sleeping for a long time, Queen Krita Duty. Who was certainly very intelligent, ordered the nurse, My dear friend, please bring my son here. Sashayanam Upavrajya, Drishtva Chotara Lochanam, Pranendriyatma Bistyaktam, Atasmitya Patad Bhuvi. When the maidservant approached the child, who was lying down, she saw that his eyes were turned upward. There were no signs of life, all his senses having stopped. And she could understand that her child was dead. Seeing this, she immediately cried, now I'm doomed, and fell to the ground. Tasya stada karnya brishaturam svaram gnatya karabhyam ura uchakkairapi pravishya raggi tvarayatma jantikam the Darsha Balam Sahasram Ritam Sutam. In great agitation, the maid's woman struck her breast with both hands and cried loudly in regretful words. Hearing her loud voice, the queen immediately came, and when she approached her son, she saw that he was suddenly dead. Papata Bumo Parivrid. Tayashucha Mumuha Vibrashta Shiro Ruhambara. In great lamentation, her hair and dress in disarray, the queen fell to the ground unconscious. 
So you can imagine how strong the pain, the emotional pain was when she saw the sun, that he felt unconscious to the ground. It's like a thunderbolt striking her. And this is due to great, great attachment to the child. Tato nripant nripant hapura bartino jena naras chenarias chenishamia rodana agate tu lavia sana sudo kitas tarsia vialikam ruruda pritagasaha. Okay, Varekshit, hearing the loud crying, all the heavens of the pallets came, both men and women. Being equally aggrieved, they also began to cry. The queens who had administered the poison also cried pretentiously, knowing full well their offense. So they didn't feel the, the other queens, they didn't really feel the pain, but they faked crying. So I guess it uh, it can be faked somehow, producing artificial tears, like the Hajjas sometimes do when they fake the symptoms of ecstasy. It, it it's a thing that, that can be learned how how to produce tears without really having some strong emotions. Shutvam ritam putram alakshi tan takam vinashtadrishti prapatans kalampati snehanu bandai dithayashucha brisham vimurchito nu prakritir dvijaya vritaha papata balasya sapada mudai vritasya visrasta shiroru hambara dirgan shvasam bashko kaloparo dato niruda kanto nasha shaka Bashitam, Bashitam. When King Chitra heard of his son's death from unknown causes, he became almost blind. Because of his great affection for his son, his lamentation grew like a blazing fire. And as he went to see the dead child, he kept slipping and falling on the ground, surrounded by his ministers and other officers and the learned Brahmanas present, the king approached and fell unconscious at the child's feet, his hair and dress scattered. When the king blinked heavily and regained consciousness, his eyes were tearful, and he, he could not speak. So he, he was drowning in an ocean of grief. It was a, such a you know, such an emotional moment that... Uh, he was on the verge of dying from uh, emotional pain and grief. Means that his mind was very, very much disturbed by this, by this news. And again, this is not something very favorable for transcendentalists uh, and devotees as well. We have example of Shiva's Thakur, uh, associate of Chaitanya Mahabrabhu, when when Mahabharata was performing his uh, kirtan, night kirtan, uh, in a Shiva Sangam, one night it happened that Shiva's son died. And although the family members of Shiva's, they, they informed him, your son died, he didn't want Mahabharata's kirtan to be disturbed. So he said, just keep quiet. Don't spread this news. Otherwise, Mahaprabhu will stop the kirtan. And I don't want him to do this. I want him to enjoy the kirtan. But somehow or other, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, he felt that something happened in the house. Uh, and he asked, tell me what happened. I know that uh, atmosphere is, is, I know this atmosphere is different. So what happened? And then they informed him that Shiva's son died. But the Shivas didn't want his kirtan to be disturbed. That's why he didn't tell him. And when Mahabrabhu heard this, he was completely overwhelmed uh, by, by Shiva's love for him, that he even uh, completely ignored the death of his own son. He embraced Shiva's and, and then uh, 
he offered him all possible blessings. And then he asked that the bro boy is brought uh, to him. So the boy, the small Sh Shiva son, he was brought, the dead body was brought. And then when Mahaprabhu's potency, uh, the, the boy went back to life and started speaking in very detached manner, explaining that it was his destiny to go, that he was grateful to spend some time in this family, but now he has to go because his karma is to go. And in this way, the boy left. And then all the residents of the house, the, the family members, Sri Vastakur, they also became uh, uh, satisfied when they saw this. They saw that that soul uh, had to go to another destination. So what is there to lament for? But what was the most astonishing that, uh, you know, the Shrivas, he, she was stuck or he didn't feel that emotional pain because his mind was completely, you know, absorbed in, in transcendence, in pleasing the Lord Chaitanya. So he just wanted the Lord's pleasure. So even grief of losing his own son couldn't, uh, you know, affect his determination to, to serve the Lord. Of course, at this point, Chitra Ketu was not at that level. His mind was very much materially affected, which is unfavorable for spiritual life. That's why Angira Muni will, together with Narada Muni, will preach to him. Patim nirik syoru shuchar pitam tada maritam chabhalam suttam eka santatim janasa ragi prakritesh when the queen saw her husband, King Chitrakeya, to merge in great lamentation and saw that that child was the only son in the family, she lamented in various ways. This increased the pain in the course of the hearts of all inhabitants the palace, of the palace, the ministers and all the brahmanas. So when you see that somebody is very much suffering, uh, their suffering also affects you. Uh, we, are, we are not the stones. So when we see that uh, others are drowning in ocean of grief, we also feel that <laughs> some part of that grief is also coming to us. So similarly, the all ministers and others, they also felt the grief of the king and the queen. Stanad vayam kumkuma panka manditam nishinchati sa sanjana bashpa bindubi vikira kishan vagalat raja sutam shushocha chitram kurariva susvaram. The garland flowers decorated in the queen's head fell and her hair scattered. Falling tears melted the co collyrium on her eyes and moistened her breasts, which were covered with kumkum powder. As she lamented, the loss of her son, the, her loud crying resembled the sweet sound of a kurari bird. Alas of providence, O Creator, you are certainly inexperienced in creation. For during the lifetime of a father, you have caused the death of his son, thus acting in opposition to your creative laws. If you are determined to contradict these laws, you are certainly the enemy of living entities and are never merciful. This is the way a conditioned soul condemns the Supreme Creator when he meets reverses. Sometimes he accuses the Supreme Personality of Godhead of being crooked because some people are happy and some are not. Here the Queen blames Supreme Providence for her son's death. Following the creative laws, a father should die first and then his son. If the creative laws are changed according to the whims of Providence, 
then providence certainly should not be considered merciful, but must be considered inimical to the created being. Actually, it is not the creator, but the conditioned soul who is inexperienced. He does not know how the subtle laws of fruitive activity work, and without knowledge of these laws of nature, he ignorantly criticizes the supreme personality of Godhead. So nothing that happens is by chance. Uh, everything is under the supreme control of the energy of the Lord. So everybody is coming and going, being born and dying according to their destiny and karma, their previous fruitive activities. So it's not the fault of creator or, or God. Only people with a small fund of knowledge, they, they can blame God. Uh, why bad things happen to good people? These are people who have no knowledge of, of the you know the laws of karma, how the laws of karma work. They don't know that there is a previous life and previous lives and there is a karma. So that's why they, they think, oh, God is not merciful. But actually, God has nothing to do with it. Uh, every person creates his own destiny uh, through their fruitive activities. Of course, if you don't have a concept of uh, previous life and incarnations like in some other religions, like in Christianity, it's very difficult to explain it, why someone is born rich and someone is born poor or sick. I'll speak, skip this. Nahi kramash chet iha mrityu jan manu Sharirinam astutat atma karma bi. Yas niha pasho nija sarga vridaye. Svayam krita stetam imam vivrish chasi. Oh my Lord, you may say that there is no law that a father must die in the lifetime of his son and that the son must be born in the lifetime of his father. Since everyone lives and dies according to his own fruitive activity, however, if fruitive activity is so strong that birth and death depend on it, there is no need of a controller of God. Again, if you say that a controller is needed because the material energy does not have the power to act, one may answer that if the bonds of affection you have created are disturbed by fruitive action, no one will raise children with affection. Instead, everyone will cruelly neglect his children. Since you have cut the bones of affection that compel a parent to raise his child, you appear inexperienced and unintelligent. So she's presenting some other arguments why God is, is wrong, the Creator. And this is all due to her strong, strong attachment to to child. He said this is the, the most, uh, you know, per, uh, attach, the most strong attachment, attachment of a parent to a child. A state in Brahma Samhita, Karmani, Nirdahati Kintucha Bhakti Bhajam, one who has taken to Krishna consciousness, devotional service, is not affected by the result of karma. In this verse, karma has been stressed on the basis of karma mimamsa philosophy, <clears throat> which says that one must act according to his karma and the supreme control must give the results of karma. The subtle laws of karma which are controlled by the supreme cannot be understood by ordinary conditioned souls. Therefore, Krishna says that one who can understand him and how he is acting, controlling Everything by subtle laws immediately becomes freed by his grace. That is the statement of Brahma Samhita, Karmani, Nirdahati Kintucha Bhakti Bhajam. One should take to devotional service without reservations and surrender everything to the supreme will of the Lord. That will make one happy in this life and the next. What is my offense? Since I only give birth and death according to Jiva's karma, there is no law that while the son lives, the father dies. 
who lived after the father died, the son should die since it depends on karma. Then let birth and death happen by karma. But then what action do you perform? How can all this be accomplished by insentient karma without my control? True, it is accomplished by you, but you have created bonds of affection for increasing your creation and you cut those bonds. Seeing such misery arising from affection, who will have affection for their children? And without affection of children, how will they survive? You are certainly a fool because of this fault in your creation. Or there is another meaning if the present tense stands for the imperative. Affection is the cause of happiness and distress. Without affection, let the children be born and let them die. Then there will be no happiness and distress. This is actually true if uh, if one would know that uh, because of affection he would suffer he would not uh, you know invest his love and emotions in in, in uh, his children and then in the future uh, expose himself to suffering i remember when i was a kid uh, small, I don't know, maybe I had maybe six, seven years. And somehow I, I had one puppy uh, that I loved very much. and uh, But it didn't last very long. Somehow the puppy got sick and uh, and died. And I was very much aggrieved. And I cried. and But there was no help. And after that I said... I'm not going to have any more puppies ever in my life because <laughs> if this happens again, I don't want to suffer again. So this is this reminded me about that. Uh, if, if if you're going to suffer because of your affection, you don't want to invest uh, any affection anymore in the in the beings that can disappoint you by 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 dying or by living. But eventually, actually, it will happen to to everybody. You know, the all the objects of our affections in this world will sooner or later have to die before or after us. So we will lose them. So eventually, we will be disappointed. So that means that uh, the real object of our affection should be, you know, the Lord, who will never die, who will never disappoint us. Well, that doesn't mean that we should not have affection to uh, our family members, our near and dear ones. We should, but that affection should not be greater than our affection and love for the Lord. And they should be actually connected. Okay, next. Tvam tata narhasi chamam kripanam anatam. Taktum vichakshva pitaram tava shoka taptam anjastarima vavatta praja dustaram yad dvantam na yahya karunena yamena duram. My dear son, I am helpless and very much aggrieved. You should not give up my company. Just look at your lamenting father. We are helpless because without the son, we shall have to suffer the distress of going to the darkest hellish regions. You are the only hope by which we can get out of these dark regions. Therefore, I request you not to go any further with the merciless Yama. Purple, according to the Vedic injunctions, one must accept a wife just to get a son who can deliver one from the clutches of Yamaraj. Unless one has a son to offer oblations to the pitas or forefathers, one must suffer in Yamara's kingdom. King Chitraketu was very much aggrieved, thinking that because his son was going away with Yamaraj, he himself would again suffer. The subtle laws exist for the karmis. If one becomes a devotee, he has no more obligations to the laws of karma. That means what we spoke previously, the devotee should not fall, should not very much care for the Shraddha smarter procedures.
Utishtatate ta ime shishavo vayasyash tvam ahvayanti nripanandana samvihartum subtar shiram hyashanaya chabhavan parito bhungshvastanam pibashu choharana svakhanam. My dear son, you have slept a long time. Now please get up. Your playmates are calling you to play since you must be very hungry. Please get up and suck my breast and dissipate our lamentation. Now she becomes delusional out of uh, intense grief. Now she thinks, no, he's just sleeping. Nahantanuja dadrishe hata mangalate mugdasmitam muda vikshana ananabjam kimva gato syapunar anvayam anyalokam nitto grinena na shinomi kala giraste. My dear son, I'm certainly most unfortunate, for I can no longer see your mild smiling. You've closed your eyes forever. Therefore, conclude that. I therefore conclude that you have been taken from this planet to another from which you will not return. My dear son, I can no longer hear your pleasing voice. Shisuka vacha vila pantyam ritam putram iti chitra vila panai chitra ketur brisham tapto mukta kanto rorodaha. Shishadeva Goswami continued, accompanied by his wife, who was just lamenting for her dead son, King Chitraketu began crying loudly with open mouth, being greatly aggrieved. So they lamented both together loudly crying. And it was a very heartbreaking scene. Tayor Vilapa to Sarve Dampatyostad Anuvrata Rurudhasma Nara Narya Saramasida Chetanam. As the king and queen lamented, all their male and female followers joined them in crying. <clears throat> because of a sudden accident, all the citizens of the kingdom were almost unconscious. And other queens, they also pretended to cry. Even Kashmalam Appanam Nashta Samgyam Anayakam. Yatvam gira namar rishir ajaghama sanarada. When the great sage Angira understood that the king was almost dead in the ocean of lamentation, he went there with Narada Rishi. Understanding all the citizens had lost the consciousness and were without a leader since Chitraketu was almost dead, the sage went there. Thus ends the commentary on the 14th chapter for the pleasure of the devotees and back down the purports. So let me see. Today we are supposed to oh the end of this chapter. Next class is supposed to start with the uh, with the uh, sloka one. So I'll just read the chapter summary of the next chapter. And then we will stop. So this is 15th chapter. The saints Narada and Angira instruct Chitraketu. So in this chapter, Angira Rishi along with Narada consoles Chitraketu as far as possible. <clears throat> Angira and Narada Rishi came to relieve the king from excessive lamentation by instructing him about the spiritual significance of life. The great saints Angira and Narada explained that the relationship between father and son is not factual. It is simply a representation of the illusory energy. The relationship did not exist before, nor will it stay in the future. By the arrangement of time, the relationship exists only in the present. One should not lament for temporary relationships. The entire cosmic manifestation is temporary. Although not unreal, it is not factual. So it is real or not unreal, but not factual. By the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, everything created in the material world is transient. 
by temporary arrangement, a father begets a child or a living entity becomes the child of so-called father. This temporary arrangement is made by the Supreme Lord. Neither father nor the son exist independently. But still, you know, father and son are very much attached to each other. Of course, in some cases, they become uh, inimical towards each other. That's also possible. But uh, we have an example of Shukadeva Goswami. As soon as he was born, he immediately left the house. And uh, Vyasadeva, he followed him, crying out, Oh, my son, oh, my son. But Shukadeva, because he was already Brahman, realized he didn't care. He didn't have any attachment. Although Vyasadeva felt some attachment towards his son. That's why he followed him, but in vain. As the king listened to the great sages, he was relieved from his false lamentation, and then he inquired about their identity. The great sages presented who they were and instructed that all sufferings are due to the bodily conception of life. When one understands his spiritual identity and surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Spiritual Person, one becomes actually happy. When one searches for happiness in matter, one must certainly lament for bodily relationships. Self-realization means spiritual realization of one's relationship with Krishna. Such relation, realization ends one's miserable material life. So we'll stop here. If anybody has any final comments or questions. If not, we will continue next Monday. Okay, nothing. Thank you very much. One check out the rules. Check the person to be able to put it on the video. Vaishnavi, Vidyam, Namaham.